<clears throat> Good morning, Scroll Talk. Um, my name is Breck. I'm the creator of Scroll and someone who really loves it. I'm, I started Scroll because I was a blogger. Never really intended to create a language, but that's just kind of how it happened over the years. And anyway, today I want to do something different. I want to talk about why you should blog on Scroll. Why all bloggers should really be using Scroll. So this this uh, this is going to go at a nice easy pace. Um, I don't have anything written. I thought it'd be fun to create a blog from scratch, to write the post from scratch, and just show you some of the reasons why I think learning Scroll is the right long-term choice and worth your time to look into and switch to. And I am available to help you if you want to make the jump to scroll. Um, you know, you can post your questions on to Twitter or, or the subreddit. Um, if you want to make the leap from whatever existing blogging platform you're on to scroll, or if you're, if you're starting a blog for the first time, you, you don't even need to convert anything, so you just, just go for it. Follow the steps you'll see in this video. But, um, and then of course, if you want more hands-on help too, that we have a course that you can sign up for. Um, but, you know, you, you can either rush head first into it. I actually think at this point, I can totally say that's a great idea. <laughs> I, it really is. Um, I've got no doubts that this is the right choice. If you want to go at a more gradual pace, that's fine too. Use it, use it a little bit here and there and before you switch everything over to it. But rest assured, the place I'm, I'm leading you is the promised land of blogging. This is such a joy to use. So simple, so powerful. It just really lets, gives you a great platform to, to go in any direction you want. Um, we don't lock you down at all. Everything you see here is open source, is public domain the way all ideas that are published should be. And really my, my job with this language is, is I wanna help bring out your best, um, your best writing, your best thinking. Um, and now what does that mean? You know, it means a lot of things. Maybe, maybe you wanna make, you write to make people laugh, to inspire people to figure yourself out, to help people, to motivate people, to instruct, educate people, to instruct your future self. Maybe you just write for your future self. Maybe you write for your kids. Maybe you write for your parents, your friends, your cousins. Um, whatever you use writing for, no matter what it is, scroll is the uh, language that I think you should use. And why, why is that? It's not necessarily because it's called scroll and, and use our words. Like if someone wants to, to fork it and call it fork, <laughs> sure, do that. Change the words, get your own domain, come up with your own brand, that's fine. What makes scroll special is not the specific embodiment of the symbols, but the design patterns that we found in nature and incorporated into the design of the language and, and software. So, um, and, and those things, yeah. Um, and we, we continue to do that. We're relentlessly pushing the boundaries. You can see scrolls up on version 146. <laughs> we follow semantic version. Now, to put this into perspective, to tell you how much of an outlier the scroll languages. Um, let's. Um, <laughs> here's the chart of all the other programming languages for version numbers. I think Erlang is on version 27. Scroll doesn't even is way off the charts. We're at version 146. It's way off the charts. And why is that? It's because we've designed the language to 
allow us to improve it in very simple ways um, that when we break our language, you almost never need to do anything. Your code will still work with the new version. Sometimes you need to change a couple words and usually it's a fine replace. Um, and the reason we've done that, well, I guess I could get into that soon, but um, well, the reason that that is the case is because everything in scroll is built on this syntax called particle syntax, which is radically simpler than anything else ever invented. Um, and, and we built this whole thing on that. Every, all of these sites, um, not just blogs, but all of these sites are just built all on from the very simple ingredients of particle syntax. Um, now, of course, there's, there's a couple of caveats to that. We're, we're still using JavaScript in some places and eventually we'll replace that too, but um, for the most part, I, you know, just full disclosure there. Um, it's all in, it's just particles all the way down. <sighs> okay, sorry, this is real. I told you it's gonna be slow and long-winded, and but why not? Why not? All right. Why you should blog on scroll? Let's see. Do we even have a blog dot scroll dot bug? We don't. So watch this. I'm going to create a new blog. It's going to be called blog.scroll.pub. So I'm picking a subdomain here and I click create. That's live on the internet. We just launched a new blog. Actually, hold on. Let's do that again. I'm going to delete that. We can go even faster. Here we go. We're going to clone this blog. So we even got a, a starting template. You know, it's not the prettiest thing, but we can improve the style later. All right, now my blog is live on the internet. Um, at this subdomain, and not only that, but look at this. We've got SSL going. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool. We've got, we've got our first post. All right, so now let's go into Hello World. This is our first post. I'm gonna rename this file. We should really put a rename button down there. Hold on, sorry. Um, I'm gonna rename this file to why you should log on scroll. Okay. We'll just have a nice little permalink here and then we'll click on that. And, um, wait, what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry, I gotta rename this to blog.scroll.pub. Okay, there we go. That was, I was confused what that long URL was. I didn't rename it yet. All right, so look, you already see that this post is live. Now, usually when I'm writing a blog post, I'll, I'll just write it on my local machine, get it to a first draft, and then I push it, publish it online. But for this time, we're just going to develop live online. Um, so here's the title of my blog, but um, we'll call this the, the new scroll blog. Um, or actually, we'll call it just another scroll blog. Just another scroll blog. Um, just another scroll blog. Here we go. It's live. This is the name of this new blog that we've created. Um, now, why why scroll? Why should I use scroll? Now, what is this? What is this question mark here, right? That's just something we added. If you want to do like a subheader. Oops, sorry, well, let me put a container. Let's put our content inside a container, right? And so what that just means is it gives us kind of a narrow strip. We could even say, if we want it to be pretty narrow, sometimes I, I generally prefer pretty narrow columns. We can, we can set the width there. We can you know, use any CSS value. So if you want it to be like 60 characters, that works too. You know, 
I like 40 characters. I'm kind of intense with the narrow columns. Um, so, so now we can write like this. Um, you know, I could go full screen here, focus. You know what we should do? We should have a dark mode. We should have a full distraction free mode. But, you know what? I'm gonna tell you the first reason why you should use scroll. And that's because you can write with anything you want. So, what by that I mean, you don't have to edit in your web browser. If you are, um, if you're familiar with the terminal, so if you're one of those kind of writers, so I, so if you're not, if you don't like the terminal, if you don't like the command line, if you get, you can ignore this part of the video, or you can watch and be like, what, you know. But basically, what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this blog to my local machine so I can work on it offline. And, um, and so now I've got all the files for that local machine. So if I go into blog, oops, dot scroll dot pub, and watch this. If I type in scroll build, that'll build the, my blog. Look how fast that is. And look at this why you should blog on scroll. Look at this. Now I can work on, you know, if I go on the plane, I can now work on this, um, or the bus, I can work on this blog post on the plane or the bus. Um, so look, here it is. And now, now I can use, okay, reason number one, use your own, use, any tool you want to write your posts. This is so important, right? So look, this sublime text, this has no support whatsoever for the scroll language, right? There's no syntax highlighting. We get no autocomplete. Look, we want that. And someday we'll have that in sublime text. We'll have that in VS Code. You know, if you want to build it, if you're a software developer, oh my goodness, it would be great if, if some people could could build those that functionality for us and I'm happy to aid in that but my point is scroll files are so simple that you can do so much without having any editor, editor support at all if you want to you know edit this in notepad on Windows you could do that um, you could edit these files they're basically plain text files but they're but they have they're mostly plain text, but they have some incredible power capabilities that constantly get smarter and smarter. Um, so now, okay. So let's go into distraction free mode. I love sublime text. It's so fast, so snappy. Um, so I personally love sublime text. And so most of the time when I'm writing on the computer, I want to write my blog posts. Okay. Now, most of my writing I actually do here in my bullet journal. I know a bullet journal seems like an extravagant purchase and it's $30 or $25 for one of these things, as opposed to say $10 for a cheap notebook. But I get months out of these. I probably go through a couple per year. So say I get three months out of one of these. Um, let's see how many pages that is. 200 pages approximately. So let's say I do, yeah, it's about say, say two pages a day. I, I write probably in, on pen and paper. So yeah, so, so say I go through four of these a year, $150 a year say I write two hours a day uh, so wait sorry $120 a year if I write two hours a day that's 700 hours I mean we're talking like a quarter per per hour of using this thing totally worth the money I also but it but it I felt extravagant when I spent that money to buy my first one but I really got hooked I just love I love the 
this this guy I love the paper I love the dots you can see the dots I don't know if you can see that so I can do some makes doing some math easier what I do is I I, I draw a line down the middle because I like my thin columns you can see that um, anyway so I do I do a lot of writing on pen and paper um, I don't own a phone I like to be offline disconnected but but I'm on the computer a lot like let's be honest I'm on the computer eight hours a day but then I'm off the computer no phone no screen 16 hours a day so it's it's nice um, or geez, some days I'm on the computer 10 hours a day 12 hours a day even. Oof. but but um but when I'm not on the computer I am talking to people in the real world I'm writing I am having a good time so cooking whatever building crap outside on the house who knows <sighs> what's my point this is such a long meandering video um, but my point is my primary writing tool is pen and paper sublime text is number two now scroll works really well with with, with pen and paper because you can um, it's basically the same thing there's there's no syntax in scroll there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's no syntax. You just don't see any syntax. There's, there's word delimiters. And there's, uh, there's new lines, but, but there's no syntax. Um, all right. So reason one, number one reason, you know, I think, I think this is going to make this reason number two. I think reason number one, simplicity timeless reason I got um, the ideas are just coming to me reason number two is going to be um, inventions are non-stop or something like that inventions keep coming we're gonna make this reason number three all right simplicity is timeless um, as Einstein says, remove everything you can, your, remove everything To, to paraphrase Einstein, the game is to remove absolutely everything from your symbols. Without. single prediction that they make so basically when you do that your words will last far more than a lifetime if the rules of the universe change over time it occurs at too slow a pace for us to be aware of this. Um, scroll has removed everything that can be removed, and yet it is still capable of Supporting not just all writing, but every computer program ever written. Um, first of all, what is scroll? We should clarify that. I don't think I've talked about this. Scroll is a language. On top 
is a radically simple language that works incredibly well for blogging and is built on top of of two of a breakthrough and uh, breakthrough built on top of parsers sorry of particles particle syntax um, in the parsers programming language if you are um, a blogger who uses who is familiar with markdown scroll is like markdown it's like markdown plus the most <laughs> programming language ever created. So it has the ease of use and simplicity of Markdown to not get in the way of your ideas, but when you want to do something very powerful it it is it can easily support that too okay why should i use scroll to blog all right we're gonna we're gonna cut this at 30 minutes so um we've got seven minutes left to finish this post why should I use scroll? Reason number one, simplicity is timeless. If the rules of the universe change over time, it occurs too slowly, slowly for us to notice. To paraphrase Einstein, the game is to remove absolutely everything from your symbols without removing a single prediction that they, without removing the, that they can make. When you do that, your words will last far more than a lifetime. The scroll has removed everything that can be removed and it's still capable of spreading out shit. Once, once you have your content in the scroll, your, your job is done. No matter, no matter where you go from... Content is in its simplest form and is not complected by some corporate interests. <laughs> Whatever. Inventions keep coming. Um, peep scroll is the basics of scroll. Scroll are simple and unchanging, but the advanced capabilities always keep improving through the invention of new parsers. New parsers. The community is constantly coming up with new ideas, ideas for parsers and combining them in simple ways that were, were unplanned but incredibly useful. There will never be a time, there will never be a month, there will, there will never be a time that it goes by without new radically useful parsers being invented. Scroll was designed 
for that inevitable march of progress. And so and so everything is designed to not break your content and make so you will always be able to um, so you will be sure that you'll be able to painlessly take advantage of all of these new capabilities. Use any tool you want to write your post. We covered that. Um, you can edit your scroll posts in the editor in scroll hub and or the editors of your choice. Um, what else? Maybe maybe three reasons. That's good. Let, now let's pu publish this, this bad boy. Let's do a spell check. All right, so now what are the various options for publishing this? I can either copy and paste this into Scroll Hub or watch this. I'll do it the advanced way. I'm going to get commit wrote first blog post locally. And then I'm gonna get push. So that's the advanced way. And now look, we just push that and um, here we go. This is live on the web. And it's version controlled. Why you should blog on scroll. This is my part. Oh, oh, we forgot to take that out. That that sample out. Oops. So we can and hook up this edit button to, to be more useful. Um, but first, let's get rid of that. All right, and then let's edit the edit button. I think if we just do this, that should take us to the editor. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so our blog is live. This is scroll, this is real simple sample now like let's imagine let's do something like we want to um add an image right um let's just take a screenshot there and then um oh let's add a video why not how big is that video file 2.8 megabytes great um <laughs> anyway so say we wanted to put a video in there Watch this, we just uploaded it, just do drag and drop. And then that video is called buildpublicdomain.mp4. Actually, I don't even need to write the word video. I can just write the file name and I click on publish. And look at this, we've got the video there. Now, of course, I don't actually want that video in this blog post. I was just kind of showing that. Actually, let me undo that a different way. Behind the scenes, we're always using Git, so we version control every change. I can just click on restore this previous version here. Actually, let's delete the video. Let's even get rid of that, restore this version. Um, so, now let's see what we got. Yeah, so look, we got rid of that video. Um, so lots of power. We, we have a blend of power and simplicity, um, but so many other things I didn't get to. We have an RSS feed, I think. We ship it by default, maybe? Feed, no, do we, do we do that by default? We don't do that by default. All right, well, let's take a look at how we do that. And one thing you can always do is you can look at a lot of these, these blogs. So like, let's look for, I think I've got a file called feed.scroll. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. And I'm going to create a feed.scroll on this thing. So we're adding an RSS feed to 
to our blog. Um, what do we call it? We call it, well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're, let's make a settings.scroll file, settings.scroll, and let's go back into the index. And let's put this in the settings. Just another scroll blog, and then description, just another blog. Another blog about scroll. I can't spell. All right, so we now let's go into the RSS feed and we'll include that. We'll get rid of this. Oh, we got already included that. So now if we take a look at this, feed.xml, here we go. Oh, you can see invalid date. Oh, that's, I forgot to put a date in here. So now you might be like, oh, I want my handheld. Like I wanna, um, I want like a WordPress editor experience or a ghost editor experience where I have all the, the individual fields. And we can, and someone can do that for sure. Like there's no, there's no reason why, um, um, you know, you can all, you'll always have this, uh oh, get step failed, building aborted. Oh, that's a bug, I'll, I'll fix that. But there's no reason why we also couldn't have other interfaces, like, like as I said, it, this is a bring your own editor type of experience because the underlying language is so simple. There's no database, it's just all text files. It's gonna be radical, like people are gonna invent all sorts of new editors for scroll, um, including some traditional blogging style editors. Um, so this is the, is the platform of the future um, and um, it might not be very crystal clear at the moment, but I mean, you can take a look. Like, people are catching on. We can see, we're seeing a nice, very steep uh, growth in, in, in readership um, and, and users. So, um, yeah, and it's all open source. You can start today. Sorry, there, there are a few bugs, but anyway. Um, Remember, simplicity is timeless. This is a long game. We're gonna keep it innovating. You can use all your tools. It's all open source, public domain. So if you're a writer, if you really take it seriously, if you love to write, if you love ideas, this is the platform for you. This is the language for you. Join us. Let's, let's build the future together. All right, have a great day, everyone. Cheers.